Hello everybody, it's Farm Sim Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. Today is a good day for Farming Simulator. Wopster's GPS Guide and Steering Mod is back and it's back for FS22 and it is better than ever as far as I'm concerned. So we're going to jump straight in and give you a little bit of an overview, a little bit of a look at it and a little bit of a tutorial if you've never used it before. This is an awesome mod. PC only I'm afraid due to the fact it uses scripts. So sorry console guys just unfortunately what it is but if you're on a pc this is a definitely a go-to mod for me it was one of my favorites in fs19 and i'm sure that's going to be the case in 22 as well so without further ado let's have a look at it so the first thing to remember is this is available on any tractor that you buy so let's just go into this class one here you have to remember to switch it on and there is a fifteen thousand pound dollar euro fee for it but uh, that is what it is, uh, and I'd strongly recommend if you've got the money, you always do it, because it's incredibly helpful. So once you've done that and purchased your tractor, we'll show you how it works. Now, here is a John Deere 8R that we have had already set up with guidance steering, and as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner there, you can see three new icons above the gear shift icons just to the right of the speedometer. Uh, and I have to say, Wops has done a fantastic job of integrating these in with the new interface. They really look like they are part of the game. So, great job, great job there. What we'll do, we will just roll over to the field, get ourselves lined up wherever we see fit. Um, let's call it around about here somewhere. And what first thing we're going to do is we're going to press Alt C, left Alt and C, to turn on guidance steering. And as soon as we do that, you can see the top two icons have changed colour. Now there's a couple of things we could do here, we could jump straight into doing a course and actually if uh, I reverse slightly or pull forward slightly you can see now we have a centre line and wherever we turn with our tractor we have a centre line for measuring things and lining ourselves up. So if you want to line yourself up at the edge of the field that is a very helpful tool to have available to you. Um, so what we're going to do though is going to jump into the menu and that is left control and S. And what we've got here is a few settings that we're going to adjust. The first one, enable guidance steering, we're going to leave as off for now because I'm going to show you the key command to turn it on. But the second one, show lines, we want that on, so it may be off for you. Just check if it's off, turn it on because that will show you your lines on the map, which will help you when you're setting things up. Everything else, we're going to leave alone for now. So line offset, snap terrain angle, and offset reversal you leave as you are. Offset reversal is one that you need if you have a, if you have a plow for example um, that rotates when you turn on a headland. Uh, if you turn that on it will adjust the offset of the plow every time you start a new row. Line offset is a new feature I believe um, and that basically changes the height of the line um, 2.25 or 2.5 being the maximum uh, of the line so you can sit it above your cab as you can see there raises the line height from the ground or you can run it on the floor I like to run it on the floor so I'm just going to leave it where it is but obviously you've got a preference there and uh, headland mode at the bottom here um, we'll come back to that in a little while but I'll show you what that does as well so we're here we've got our line set up we've got our tool or our implement ready we'll unfold that and what we're going to do, you need to set two points. You need to set your A point and your B point, and that will then calculate the angle at which you want the line to run through the field. So to set your A point, you press Alt-E twice, and you can see just down there, doesn't help that the tractor's green as well, but we have a little A that sits under the tractor. So you can see that point under the tractor. And again, this is another change uh, Wopster's done. The lines and the, and the detailing of these is slightly different than it was in FS19, uh, but an improvement for the better. So now you've pressed your A point, what you want to do is drive forward around about 15 to 20 meters. So you can see the A point there and you can see the dotted line coming off it. So you can stop anywhere around about here. It will tell you if you haven't gone far enough. Uh, so it will keep you right. And then you're going to press Alt E again. That is left Alt E. And look what's happened. We have set ourselves a course and it's worked it out. Um, now, as you can see there, if I pull forward slightly, the blue lines look wider than our implement. 
that's not ideal so what we need to do is set the width of our implement so again control s to open the menu and you will see here width increment auto width set width here so what we want to do here the easiest thing to do here is press auto width and it will calculate the width of the implement you're pulling behind so important to make sure you've unfolded it before you press that button and the other thing you want to do if you don't have an offset uh, tool behind you so think of something like a, a mower that's offset to the left or the right or a plow like we talked about before uh, make sure that that is set to zero as well so that it doesn't uh, cause any problems uh, and now because we've pressed auto width here we go back and now you can see that the blue lines have narrowed to fit the width of the implement and all we need to do now is to press alt and x and it turns your course on. Now, the only thing you need to do now is press your accelerator and lower your implement. So, we'll do both of those. And now I'm pressing the accelerator. I'm doing no steering left or right. And as you can see, we are cultivating the ground. So I'll go on a little bit further. We'll run up to this headland here. And what we'll do, we'll lift our implement and you hear those two bleeps there? That tells you when you're reaching the headland. And automatically you'll hear two beeps again as the guidance steering switches off. Now you can see as I'm turning here, it's skipped two rows because it's quite a tight turn. But again, you can steer your way back or you can skip a row because it will always keep the exact distance between the rows available to you so you don't have to worry about uh, missing bits. And when you're set up again, Alt X to turn GPS on, lower your implement again, and pull forward, and there you go. And as you can see there, the blue line running exactly next to the last row that you did. Um, perfect up and down rows. And that is why GPS is so brilliant. Um, now there is a couple of other things I just want to show you. Headland management is an interesting one. Now if you turn on headland management you will see that it switches from off to stop. Now uh, the distance here you can set uh, to whatever you like. For example I'm going to set mine a little bit lower than 9 down to 4. Now what happens with this if you are using cruise control the tractor will automatically stop when it gets to a headland. So I'm going to press the 3 button here to run cruise control so I am not touching anything on the steering wheel no pedals no steering nothing this is doing it all automatically and we'll just watch and listen when it gets to the end of the headland so we're on cruise control coming up to the edge of the field two beeps and you can see there the tractor has stopped now if you increase that number you saw it was at nine before it will move further out of the field so it really just calculates how far it wants you you want the travel tractor to travel before it stops the gps so let's lift our tool there just to come off the field now the other option you've got available to you we'll just pull the menu up again here is and if we click on the second tab here you can see the line strategy so we've got a b straight here line method a b now your other option here is to go a plus heading and what a plus heading does if i press set a there you can set the degrees offset from straight that you want this to go at so for example we are pointing straight forward here let's do that so that is at zero degrees, so pointing north. Let's just jump out here to demo that. There we go, we are pointing directly north, whereas our other stuff was set to an offset. So once you're heading north, which is zero, I can then go back into here and I'm gonna say, actually, I want us to be running at 20 degrees. And if I go back to here, you can see it's set the angle to 20 degrees. And then it's simply a case of pressing Alt X again to turn it on and either using cruise control or your accelerator to line yourself up and then lower your implement and off you go. So very helpful if you've got fields at a certain angle. Um, also handy if you are squaring off fields as well. 
uh, and you can change the angle that you're driving at to do that. And finally, I'm going to jump in one more time, um, because you've got your save options here. So here you can give yourself a name, so let's call this track 1, uh, and you press this button here, and that track is now saved. Um, you've got the option here to save track to a farm for multiplayer, which is great, so if you've got more than one farm on a multiplayer map, that's great. A new uh, option there, which is really good to see. And then this one down at the bottom, which is an interesting one, this 90 degrees, which is a great one. I'm going to just press it now, and you'll see the track tip behind us, uh, behind the menu here, will rotate through 90 degrees. Very handy for square fields. I'm going to have to press them again straight away, but there we go. But if you want to, you can utilise that to turn in your field as well, and you will obviously turn... In a, in a manner that will keep the rows uh, identical all the way along. So there you have it, Wopster's Guidance Steering or GPS mod is back and it is better than ever. I hope you've enjoyed that, um, I certainly have. I'm very much looking forward to including this in one of my sim dashboards, uh, so keep an eye open for that. But for now, from me, the Farm Sim Guy, thank you very, very much for watching and thank you, Wopster, you've made my weekend. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.